flying out into the darkness to fight ghosts. What do you mean? They all die fighting Spider-Man. It's their fate. They're a danger to our universe. You're not gonna take this away from me. Peter. You're struggling. To have everything you want while the world tries to make you choose. This is all my fault. I can't save everyone. Welcome back everyone, this is going to be my new Spider-Man No Way Home Sinister Six video. I know you all have questions about who the sixth member of the team is because there are only five that we see in the trailer that we know of. Very misleading, these Marvel trailers. You can't totally trust everything that you see. There was a recent clip that was released that I think reveals what's going on with that sixth member. So we'll break it all down. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're doing a giveaway for IMAX tickets. All you have to do to enter, just be a subscriber and leave all your theories about who the sixth member of the team is going to be on the video. So you've all probably seen the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer a billion more times since yesterday alone, but there's still been a lot of questions about what's actually going on with the Sinister Six in the movie in the Sinister Five of it all. Because, like I said, we only see five actual members of the team on screen in the trailer footage. They're very prominent. Like, they really want you to think that this is the whole team. But it's not called the Sinister Five. It's called the Sinister Six. And Marvel wouldn't roll this hard on Sinister Six tropes, Spider-Man vs. Sinister Six from the comics, to not actually put a sixth member of the team in the movie in some way. The way they're actually doing the Sinister Six, their actual story in the movie, is much twistier than you would expect. It's not meant to be a straight up Spider-Man vs. the Sinister Six kind of story, but they're kind of pitching it that way from the trailer footage. But thanks to a recent clip with Michael Keaton, it seems like he just confirmed that he's going to be the sixth member of the team as Vulture. Here's the clip of him talking about getting ready to film new Vulture scenes. He also talks a little bit about doing new Batman stuff briefly during this too. I'm shooting tomorrow. I'm shooting. You shoot Vulture. tomorrow? Yeah, man. What are you shooting tomorrow? Some Vulture stuff. Yo, you're Vulture tomorrow. All right. Uh, I didn't go, hey, who else is, what other guys are going to be there? You no. didn't say that. No, because here's how bad it is. Mm -hmm. I'll show up and I'll go, I'll be like, in, and I'll go, hey, uh, at what point does, uh, does uh, Spider-Man show up or something? <laughs> <laughs> and they'll say, what? And I go, you know, when does Hulk come in? Right. I showed up on one of the, when I played Vulture, which is really a fun character, I got to mm -hmm. say. And, uh, and I, they have to brief, they have to brief me. And I see it in their eyes. They're going, uh, so, you know, when, uh, and then they'll say, when you did blah, blah, and then, you know, your character Toombs comes in and he did that thing. Remember, because earlier in Spider-Man, and I'm going, right, right, and I'm thinking, and no <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea who's who or why or where, even where I am. I'm sure Kevin Feige is probably going to be giving him a phone call about that. Kevin Feige been making a lot of those kinds of phone calls to actors in Spider-Man No Way Home recently, especially with Jamie Foxx kind of confirming that there would be multiple versions of Spider-Man in the movie just yesterday after the trailer came out. Thank you very much, Electro, for confirming that. He kind of did that way back when they announced his character, too, last year. Like, we've known for a while now that there were going to be multiple versions of Spider-Man. But what Michael Keaton is talking about in that clip is how he's in two different multiverse movies and it's just totally confusing for him as an actor. Spider-Man No Way Home is a very Spider-Verse type of multiverse movie. He's also in the Morbius movie, which I'll talk about in a second, because that's important for what's happening with the Vulture in Spider-Man No Way Home, especially after what they did with Venom in the Venom Let There Be Carnage post credit scene. But Keaton is also in the Flash movie playing a multiverse version of Batman, so it's kind of the same concept. So that's why he was joking about the producers of both of these movies, the Spider-Man No Way Home, the Marvel people, and the Flash movie DC people having to brief him on the continuity every single time he goes in to film new scenes for these different movies. The example he gave was the Spider-Man No Way Home producers having to remind him what happened to Vulture at the end of Spider-Man Homecoming and then during the Morbius movie. And the big Sinister Six arc in the movie is all about testing Spider-Man's character. That's why he has this big moral conflict with Doctor Strange in the movie. Spider-Man versus Doctor Strange is a fight over morality. If you've seen all the clips recently of Tom Holland talking about the movie, he basically said his Spider-Man will always try to save people, even the villains. And Doctor Strange is trying to send the Sinister Six characters back to their original universes, which means sending them to their deaths. As both he and Doctor Octopus tell him during the trailer. So that's why Spider-Man yoinks Doctor Strange's box with the symbol of the Vashanti on it. It's the same symbol that's on all the Sanctums and the Ibagamoto. The box and the enchantment on it is probably what Doctor Strange is trying to use to send the Sinister Six characters back. 
So part of what's going on in their arc, all of these sinister six scenes in the movie, is that Spider-Man is trying to save them, save the villains, but also trying to stop them from destroying the main MCU reality. Like, they're trying to kill him, MJ, and Ned Leeds while he's trying to save them. And what does that remind you of? It's exactly the way they ended Spider-Man Homecoming, with Spider-Man fighting the Vulture to stop him, but also fighting to save his life. Time to go home, Pete. I'm trying to save you! So if they're doing that again during Spider-Man No Way Home, wouldn't it make sense to bring the Vulture back again for that? Vulture already did him a solid in the Spider-Man Homecoming post credit scene when Scorpion teased that Sinister Six team up. Vulture pretends to not know his secret identity, but Mysterio kind of threw that concept out the window. Still though, Vulture owes Spider-Man his life. So I think the idea is what they'll wind up showing us is that different versions of Spider-Man in saving some of the villains' lives, like Tobey Maguire saving Dr. Octopus's life in Spider-Man 2 and Tom Holland doing the same thing for Vulture, Karma comes back around and some of those villains in the movie will help Spider-Man defeat the other Sinister Six characters without having to kill them. It also ties into the whole great power, great responsibility speech, the classic Spider-Man speech. Tom Holland himself actually quoted this at the recent event where they revealed the trailer. And we have a responsibility to do the right thing and help out our neighbor and look after one another. And that's exactly what Spider-Man stands for. So with great power comes great responsibility. You do kind of wonder if they're going to actually say that in the movie just because they tried to avoid doing the same Spider-Man tropes in every single film. Like that's why they avoided doing Uncle Ben during Spider-Man Homecoming. But in my video yesterday, I talked about Dr. Octopus's arc during the movie, where it actually seems like, based on some of the later trailer footage, it seems like he's actually working with Spider-Man trying to fight the other Sinister Six characters, because you see Electro fighting him, like blasting him with his lightning out this window here. A lot of you probably also had this theory too, like Dr. Octopus actually being a good character during the film because of his arc during Spider-Man 2, and them not wanting to trample on that. If his story in Spider-Man No Way Home is meant to pick up right after the end of Spider-Man 2, at the end of Spider-Man 2, he redeemed himself by trying to save the city by pulling his reactor down into the East River, sacrificing his life in the process. But Doctor Strange's spell and Spider-Man messing it up, effectively bringing him back to life by yoinking him from across space-time. So even though you see a lot of scenes of Dr. Octopus just giving Spider-Man the business, it does sound like at some point he starts to help him, like they find some common ground. After all the joking about his name, that is pretty funny to see Spider-Man joking about his name, Otto Octavius. But looking at all the Willem Dafoe, Green Goblin, the Electro, the Sandman, the Lizard scenes, it just seems like some of the other Sinister Six characters get backed into a corner in their fighting Spider-Man, thinking that they're fighting for their lives. So I think they're trying to do a little more character development for them in the movie. Like, it's not just about them wanting to kill Spider-Man because they hate Spider-Man. They're actually fighting for their lives legit. Like, you can't send us home because we're going to die if we go home. In the whole idea that Doctor Strange is basically giving them the you don't have to go home, but you definitely can't stay here kind of speech. Like, you're a danger to the main MCU universe, so you cannot stay here. But just based on the way they end the trailer with that tag scene, just setting up Doctor Strange 2, it seems like they do find some temporary solution to this multiverse problem, but that solution just creates larger problems for Doctor Strange with reality crumbling around them that he'll have to solve during Doctor Strange 2 Multiverse of Madness. Like, yay, we've saved all the Sinister Six characters' lives and most of my friends' lives and successfully contained them, but in doing so, they doom the main MCU universe. Quick spoiler warning for the Eternals movie too. This is kind of the way they ended the Eternals movie where they do wind up saving the earth, they save the day, but in doing so, they kind of doom the planet to judgment from the other Celestials and Ereshim the Judge. Like they kill a Celestial and now they have Tiamat basically turned to stone in the Indian Ocean just jutting out from earth so big that you can see him from outer space. Nick Fury's one eye is probably rolling into the back of his head up in his space station just watching this all play out. But I think the idea with the timeline is that this happens with the Eternals over on this side of the planet, like over in the Indian Ocean on the other side of the Earth, right before Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, and the Sinister Six characters crack all of reality, like you see it crumbling around them and the multiverse starts bleeding into the main MCU universe in a really big way. So Spider-Man No Way Home, Eternals, and Doctor Strange 2 all kind of overlap just a little bit. But what does the end of Spider-Man No Way Home mean for the future of the Sinister Six characters? Because if you guys have seen the news the past couple of months, Sony is basically working up to another new spin-off Sinister Six franchise, the way that they were trying to do during the Andrew Garfield Amazing Spider-Man movies. So what they might wind up doing at the end of Spider-Man No Way Home is just dedicating a small scene at the end to just let you know where they might take that without necessarily pinning themselves into a corner. 
The same way that the Venom Let There Be Carnage scene only implied where their plot might go. Like it sounds like Venom is going to be fighting Spider-Man in a future movie, but they didn't tell you exactly how that's going to play out. Everyone let me know in the comments though, what do you think about Vulture being the sixth member of the Sinister Six team and also helping out Spider-Man defeat them just like Dr. Octopus is a member of the team but winds up switching sides and helping Spider-Man during the movie. Big reminder that Hawkeye episodes start next week. They're actually going to drop the first two episodes on day one so I'll post my videos for both of those next Wednesday when they release them. I've got a couple of the big Spider-Man videos that I'm working on. Just leave all your requests, your big questions in the comments below. Everyone click here to watch the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer a billion more times and click here to learn about that mystery Andrew Garfield Spider-Man scene. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.